signs the exiles shall be
happy music. Mmm. This makes you want to clap! Woo! Oh yeah! This is the welcoming song, Spawner! Oh yeah, you want to clap, Spawner! <laughs> okay, enough, enough happiness, enough happiness. What is going on, you guys, Fico? Hey, guys, this is uh, welcome to the live cast. I'm Fico, and uh, well, hello, everybody, Mr. Saturday Night, Mr. Bonner, hello, and Mr. Setakaiba. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the live cast. I am, uh, this is where I normally gather some of the stuff that's happening around the internet in the world of gaming, and we just kind of break it down, talk about it, just kind of, you know, having some fun, some conversations, and uh, I'm uh, I'm happy that you guys are all here. Uh, Mr. Seto Kaiba, what's up? I'm glad you managed to join us. Uh, that was the soundtrack for for the video game called Pyre. This is from the developers that made Bastion and uh transistor and those two are amazing games uh and also of course uh the, the game pyre which distances itself away a little bit from these but anyway it's it's looks like it's a really good game it's part of the games that i am eventually going to be playing so i will uh, i hope that i get the start playing that game someday so a uh, couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, first off, uh, if you see me coughing or hear me coughing or sneezing, I am sorry. I don't know what's going on with the allergies this year. I'm starting to feel pain in my sinuses. I'm done doing this. And I was, um, and also, uh, that's, I'm sorry, just bear with it. Uh, I, I wish I could do something about it. I, I'm taking allergy medication and it's and it's sort of helping, but it doesn't look like it is really. So I'm just not taking those medication anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and just buy the ones from CVS or whatever. Uh, second of all, yes, I didn't I did stream yesterday, the live cast, because I just got back. I did stream for a few hours. Saturday night caught me for a bit. Uh, and uh, I said that um, I was a way watching my uh, I was I went to see my brother who uh, my brother lives in Parkland Florida he actually lives a mile away from uh, Marjorie Doug uh, Marjorie Stonewood uh, Douglas uh, uh, what was all that <laughs> you mean the clapping oh no I just felt like clapping <laughs> Oh, you were, uh, and I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, oh no, the first part wasn't all that important. Was the first part was just that, um, I'm, I'm suffering through allergies. So really is if you, if you see me sneeze or you see me cough or uh, it's all because of the allergies. I, uh, the allergies that I have, uh, Saturday night are, um, because we live in, I live in, in Florida and, uh, there is a particular tree there. There's this Oak tree that when the season breaks when the seasons uh start to shift from winter to uh to spring they spore out this pollen yes uh well well the thing is that uh moving doesn't help spawner <laughs> no i'm taking my allergy medications that's not i i i actually uh i'm taking my medication to go um to deal with the pollen that these that these uh oak trees are spewing out and what's worse is it's, it's it's not raining so it's not washing it away so it's just lingering around so it, it, and i take my medication every morning but it's like it's not even really doing anything uh also uh here's the problem with moving uh in florida in the area where i live it's just they're all over the place you can't there's nowhere you could go <laughs> in florida but there's not there it isn't it just, just doesn't help uh that you just need to raise your humidity in your room i have those problems too and i have my water tank to counter that oh uh, 
Stopping the wind? Oh, if I could stop the wind. I could, no, don't stop the wind. Make the wind form a hurricane just, just to carry all of this stupid pollen away from me. <laughs> And, uh, and the second part was uh, that I was saying was that I do apologize. I was um, I was in Parkland, Florida, uh, two days ago visiting my brother because his son's birthday is this week. But they're gonna they celebrated it on Saturday. It was really fun. Um, sadly, it is uh, my brother lives about a block away from where that school shooting happened about a month ago, and uh, he said he heard sirens. He said he heard helicopters he said he was starting getting alerts on his phone don't go outside lock all your doors i mean it was pretty scary for him so yeah just so so if you could you just need to traverse your time like <laughs> um uh hashtag not gonna help because if i traverse back in time and I cut down every oak tree, then what'll happen is I'll get a huge ass uh, snowstorm followed by a huge ass hurricane followed by a huge ass plagues of Egypt <laughs> thing that starts to starts to happen. Um, as you all know, time traveling is not good. It's never good. <laughs> so uh, it's fun though. It's interesting. Uh, I have a. Uh, always liked stories that focused on that anyway uh and also uh another announcement before we get started where i'm about to get started is that uh i will be getting uh far cry 5 uh this uh not this week but maybe next week uh i have a a coupon or i actually have a gift card for my birthday which i'm going to use to spend to buy far cry 5 i'm going to wait about a week maybe a week and a half almost two weeks just to see how the game on pc runs a friend of mine wants me to play with him online and uh i want that game too so uh, i know that i've been playing a lot of prey and i said that i'd be switching from games so I'm going to start Final Fantasy 15 next, and then I'm going to start Far Cry 5 at the same time when I eventually get it, and I'll be playing both those games uh, interchangeably. Uh, one day I'll play Final Fantasy 15, then the other day I'll play Far Cry 5, and then we'll do the longer day gaming streams, we'll do more of one game, and then we'll do more of the other, and all of that jazz all that fun noise so expect far cry 5 very soon and uh but i did say i was gonna play final fantasy 15 it's just waiting for me to get played i'm also doing some power leveling with final fantasy 12 so i'll be hopping back into that so we could start going on the other stuff like the hunts the stuff that's very very difficult and that is what i hope that i could um finally beat and finish beat the optional bosses uh get that uh, get that zodiac spear and uh zodiac spear and well continue to just playing final fantasy games i don't know if i'm going to be doing all of the final fantasy games eventually i mean i've done one and now i'm doing another one so logic would state that i could probably just keep on doing them but uh i've got some games that i also want to play i want to also play subnautica i want to also play pyre which as you could tell i mean i'm a big fan of the super giant games but maybe uh instead of just jumping straight into pyre maybe we could do all the super giant games because i own all of them we could start with bastion then transistor and then we could uh jump into pyre pyre seems to be like a complete departure for it but i do want to play that game very strategic and uh that will be it that's all the announcements i have again i apologize if you hear me scratch my throat if I do this, <clears throat> I have been just, mm. I don't like the time traveling aspect itself because you know they will never end good and they're always plot holes. I do like the parallel alternate dimension stuff uh, a lot as well too. But the time traveling aspects, I mean, when I was done with Life is Strange, that has left me asking a whole bunch of questions. It's more about that force that uh, that like, for instance, like 
okay, well, you uh, you change something. Uh, like, for instance, like, why did you have the ability to rewind time? Why do you get punished for using an ability that you didn't choose to have? Why was it that there's why is it that it causes these things to change why is it that the result of changing something is the weather getting uh, that maybe it's different every time that's what i hope that eventually if it gets repeated on the next life is strange game or if the next life is strange game touches on another aspect like maybe like like you said parallel dimension travel that would be so awesome and if they could do it i i i mean this this story was incredible so we hope we hope that by i hope that e3 this year has uh don't dot don't dot uh don't not don't not whoever the developers of life is strange is i hope that they announce it so but anyway guys uh let's move on let's go on with the first bit of uh of interesting stories today this is just something that i found this morning and this is the reason that i named the stream today uh ea selling you dlc for your dlc for your dlc for your dlc and it keeps going until the end of time infinity the same place where saturnite uh likes to go through uh through fiction those multiple dimensions so the sims a lot of you know that uh, The Sims is uh, is a, pop a very, very popular game that was done by the studio Maxis. Uh, Maxis used to make The Sims games. And of course, what happened? E uh, EA got involved. And well, EA uh, shut down Maxis. And now all of what they do is just that. Th that's all that they do. So what is all of what i'm scrolling down here this these are are different uh packs like for instance like this is the digital deluxe version of the game this is the version of the game that took away cats and dogs but brought it back because the sims was designed to make you pay more and more and more like for instance there's an expansion pack that's forty dollars there's an expansion pack for uh this i assume is to add more jobs there's an expansion pack for city living which offers the city which i would think that that would have been something included in the original game but of course we are talking about ea fuck you why the hell would we give you anything willingly and then there's these things called uh, packs, which includes like different destinations, uh, the ability to own a restaurant, the ability to add vampires, which I would have thought that would have been something included. And then, of course, you get the expansion, which offers you pets, which normal price is $40. But hey, you know what? EA is merciful, and they'll give it for you half off. So, like, and then there's below, there's additional stuff, like the ability to build a, ha a, a hangout. Sometimes it's just funny moments. <laughs> That's always fun. That's always fun. Oh, you could do like backyard stuff, like a really cool slip and slide with a shark head at the end. My kids first pet stuff. Oh, we are going to get to that in a second. Oh, look at that. Look at that. They gave one away for free. Oh, how merciful. And each of these, oh, each of the stuff, uh, the additional stuff that you could have added for free, it's all, you have to pay $10 for it. Vintage glamour stuff, fitness stuff, uh, the ability to build a bowling alley, the ability to have some cool stuff like an ice cream machine on your kitchen that you have to pay 10 bucks for. So basically, 
what this game has become, it's become basically the modus operandi of pretty much every game that EA does. They take a game from a different developer, they strip mine it, and then they expect you to pay everything bit by bit. And this isn't just cosmetic only stuff. This is core stuff from your game. These are things that, yes, while you would have bought in different games, how much does the actual game cost with all of the DLC? Well, let's find out, shall we? Okay, let's assume that we're just getting The Sims. Okay, this is The Sims. That's uh, $40. So, let's let's do the math shall we so uh in my opinion uh i don't disagree with you spawner but it's a it's a game that a lot of people play and if you notice that there's these all these packs you you want to know why they're 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 all here all these packs well because people buy them so let's let's assume that we're gonna go just get the sims okay so that's 39.99 okay so let's 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 write that amount down 39.99 okay and then we've got one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three expansion packs. And each of these expansion packs costs $39.99. FIFA is actually worse. FIFA is the is the is the it's what they want to become. That's what they want to become. FIFA. Okay, so so already you have the sims and then you have you have to pay uh, an extra 120 dollars so to get the sims with all of the expansion packs that is 159.96 okay so that's 159 dollars just to get the expansion packs and the game okay but then you've got the game packs which adds the retreats it adds the ability uh it gives you the ability to sh you know like parenting packs this is like more additional stuff so we've got they're 20 bucks so we got one two three four five six six twenty dollar packs so math is we've got uh six times 19.99 that is an extra 119 dollars and 94 cents which we will add to the 159 159.96 9, this oh for crying out loud uh, it was like a uh, 159 uh 96 uh, plus 119 okay so this is what you get 278 dollars it's actually a little bit more but it's a 200 and let's go 279 so what it'll cost you to get uh all of those packs all of those game packs the game and the expansions is already almost as expensive as getting a switch but we're not done because we also have to take the extra forty dollars that you're charging for this that you it's on sale today but we're gonna just charge it and look at that you're at three hundred and eighteen dollars and ninety five cents you've already got what enough money to get a switch and a used game but guess what we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen ten dollar packs thirteen ten dollar packs so we're at three eighteen 
95. Okay, so we'll take 13 times 999. That's about $129 plus the 31895 and you are at $448.82. You are at a PlayStation 4 Pro levels of expensive just to get stuff that was originally in these games, strip mine and taken out. But why is it that I'm talking about it? Because there's a little bit of a story about the cats and dogs. So the cats and dogs, let's read what it is. Shall we create a variety of of cats and dogs, add them to your Sims homes, and to forever change their lives and care for neighborhood pets as a veterinarian with the Sims 4 cats and dogs. The powerful new creative pet tool lets you personalize cats and dogs, each with their own unique appearances, distinct behaviors, and for the first time, expressive outfits. For the first time, implying that there have been pets in this game before. These wonderful lifelong companions will change your Sims lives and new and special ways. Uh, treat animal ailments as a veterinarian. I, you already said that and run your clinic in a beautiful coastal world where there is no so much for the Sims and their pets to discover. OK, so you don't only just get the Sims, um, you know, the ability to own a pet which I think that should be something that should be in the game. But you get the ability to be a veterinarian, which should be in the game. And the ability to go to a beautiful coastal world. Well, actually, you, you run your own clinic in a beautiful coastal world where it's suggesting that they're adding more stuff in it. But, okay. So. So you would... You would think that having $448 worth of content for one game wasn't enough. You'd have thought, hey, how, wow, EA, you, you're terrible. <laughs> you're horrible people. How worse could you get? Well, let's go back to that page now. If you notice, there's this little thing. There's this little green spot here. It says, add more with my first, with my first, first pet stuff pack. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. They have added a stuff pack for your freaking DLC expansion. So what does this $10 stuff pack include? Okay. Welcome home a new small animal and show off your love for cats and dogs with the Sims for my first pet stuff. Teach your Sims how to care for smaller household pets. Decorate a home with pet inspired furniture and dress your pets in your favorite Sims outfits. Uh, you get to care for a new pet. You get to dress your cats and dogs. You get to decorate your home with additional pet stuff. And if you see here, you can own a gerbil, guys. You can own a guinea pig. You can own a guinea pig. Oh my God! Look, you could you could put you could put a little thing here. You could put a little height chart that has a little Saint Bernard and a little and a little Shih Tzu on top of it. But look, you get you get to dress your cat. Look, look, you get to dress your cat like a little bumblebee. This is adorable. This is absolutely adorable. Look, look, you can interact with your pet. You could give your pet. You could give your cat. You could this. You could let your little. You could dress your dog like you. I mean, look at this fine, handsome young man here with with a boxer, and, and then you could you could just you could just dress him. You could just dress him. And look, 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 look. Your your little kids. 
that they're here assuming that you bought the family pack and then you could dress your dog with a with a little hat and then you could surround this 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 all stuff with little cat stickers and and all this is for an extra ten dollars that you you will only be able to get this if you pay the forty dollars for the cats and dots expansion that you have to have or else you can't even use this fucking dlc fuck you ea holy shit this is literally dlc for your dlc and that is an extra ten dollars which means you get all of this stuff for four hundred and fifty eight dollars and eighty two cents it's more expensive to play this game than actually owning a fish tank put real fish in it now i'm not saying as a saltwater tank because that's a little more expensive but going to the pet store and buying a fish in this little tank and a little bit of food that is a pet experience this this is taking content that was available here in this expansion here this one and then they were they and then ea said hey you know what we'll do let's let's take out even more content away from this game and then sell it back to these people because of course they will because of course they do that because of course why would ea ever ever change 458 dollars to get the full experience <coughs> to get the full experience yes it should be free if you wanted to add more stuff to your pets stuff hey you've already purchased it for twenty dollars today or forty dollars normally why on earth would you make people pay more the answer is because they know people are stupid enough to do that they don't research ea they just think oh my god ea is giving us so much more options again oh my god they're incredible no 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 and as for ea closing they're not going to close with these practices not when you can make people buy more stuff Oh, this is adorable. Let's play the video. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Do you own The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs? Oh, we'll get ready for more. Look at this. Look at that. Own more stuff. Look at that. You can put gerbils. Yay. Look at that. Oh, no. The gerbil bit you. What's that? You want that experience in your game? What's that? You want your experience? You want the gerbil experience? Well, you gotta pay $10 to get your gerbil experience. Look at that. Oh, look at that. You can get a little laser pointer. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He's so sporty. Oh my god, look. You get to dress as a rat. I hope you enjoy not being able to dress as a rat unless you pay $10. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. The gerbil is ticking up. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that. Go fuck yourselves, EA. Go fuck yourselves. Fuck yourselves with a 10-inch pole. Go fuck yourselves. You people are fucking evil. That is why you are the worst company in America. That is why you guys will forever, ever suck. Forever! But... Anyway, uh, that is that is what it is. Uh, I heard about it this morning, and I was like, "Oh no, we have to talk about this." Um. Oh yes, they're evil. Yes, they are most definitely evil. What would you call a company that acquires a game studio, 
closes them because of that same company and then takes their game and restructures it to their vision and leaves all those people um i mean perhaps maybe uh <laughs> okay well here's the thing evil if they're technically evil well maybe not but the problem is that they're they're just they're just the terrible company. They're terrible. They close studios that don't fall in line. I mean, they they look at what they did with Visceral. They're going to make a Star Wars game. Well, assuming that they don't lose the exclusivity rights to this uh if they don't lose the ability to be able to uh to to do this. If they don't lose the Star Wars license which spoilers i think they are um or maybe they won't who knows it's ea they always get away with everything my question is, is is like when they've closed so many studios down i mean they closed down maxis and look what they're doing with the sims uh they, they look at what they did with sim with sim, sim city Look at what they've done with all of the games that they've gotten themselves directly involved in. And then when they mess up, they then have the developers to as a scapegoat. Oh, no, we didn't do that. No, it was them. Uh, yeah, screw that. Uh, screw EA. I, I think that they're one of the worst companies in the world. Uh, I would say they were genuinely evil if they were. But then again, Konami does force their workers uh to do like slave like work um heavy monitoring um yeah yeah they found who they found their whales that's who they're looking for they're looking for their whales they're looking for the whales more money from fans for the dlc they see they see the potential but they don't give it time to breathe or anything no they see the potential in a game and then all of a sudden they're like oh, we got to take all their money but anyway, that's that's uh, that's going to be the end of that discussion. I wish uh, I mean, there. I mean, Konami is much worse to their employees, uh, like say how they uh, if they don't if they disagree, then they'll just make them go build pachinko machines or they'll uh, they'll embarrass them in front of everybody or they'll make them go work at their Konami spas and fitness centers where they I mean, this is degrading work. I mean, you, you're, you're there to make games, but if you don't agree with the higher ups then you're basically you know you're basically uh we're gonna make you regret you ever working with us oh and then they get blackballed by said company and then when they leave konami they do whatever they can to make sure that they don't get their medical uh, benefits at, or their severances or they don't they just blacklist them for the whole company and they'll just make sure i mean this is pettiness up the highest ea doesn't do that so technically evil you're right spawner they're not literally evil but figuratively and metaphorically they are fucking evil they're not in they're not literally evil but they're very very close but and i know that this next this is not this doesn't have anything to do with video games but it does kind of have something to do with video games. And that is Toys R Us. I remember Toys R Us. I think everybody in Puerto Rico still loves that Toys R Us. Unfortunately, after 70 years, Jeffrey the Giraffe is finally going to get put down, get shot in the back, and finally be turned into a nice fur coat. Because they are closing all all or their stores here in the u.s and probably the foreign stores as well too and this is from cnn money this is uh due to a lot of uh things that the toys r us didn't adjust to they d d underestimated their market and they also underestimated walmart they over underestimated a bunch of things they didn't adapt to the market and there they go. Uh, also, uh, 31,000 people are going to get laid off. And apparently, they're not even going to get a severance. Apparently, they weren't getting paid that much. But, yeah. 
They filed a bankruptcy that said that it was a horrific holiday season. Worse projections. They only earned 81 million in pre-tax profit, 250 million from the last one. They're closing uh, about 180 stores to see if they could adjust and do a bunch of things. But honestly, there it's just not enough. They didn't. They were too big. They got really big, and they didn't adapt to anything. I mean, let's see if there's anything we could uh, we could read here. Uh, the stark reality is that the company will run out of cash in the United States in May. The company noted it its filing, so it determined the best way to pay back its creditors is to liquidate the remaining inventory in its remaining stores. Everything is up for sale. All of these assets are available. Someone can literally buy these assets and they are willing to pay one more dollar than the liquidation value of these assets. The fact. Uh, Toys R Us did not say when it would close the stores, but they will probably stay open for the least two months. The company has filed store closure notices that require a 60 day wait before it can get shut down. Toys R Us also told its 31,000 employees that they will be laid off. The company's hope is to remain alive outside of the United States. Uh, it may. It said many of its stores in Canada, Europe, and Asia remain strong, viable businesses. I don't believe that. Um, I think they may do better than the U.S. stores because there's so many more Walmarts than there are uh, here in the U.S. than there are everywhere else. But I, I doubt it. The reason that this I find this very sad is that is that um, you know. You you could buy a lot of video games. You could buy a lot of video game systems, and uh, Toys R Us is a, is a place where it's 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 like a childhood staple. But unfortunately, uh, if you uh, if you're a business and you don't adjust to the times, you don't. You, it'll happen. To what happened to Blockbuster? I mean, look at the giant that Blockbuster was in the video rental stop. They never adjusted back uh to the changes of the market they didn't adjust it to technology they didn't they were still terrible terrible customer service their stores look antiquated everything was bad in those stores and well they they chose not to change with the times toys r us is a flash in the past it didn't it chose not to change and they decided to just nothing like uh toys r us doesn't really have any competition here in germany other than one other great toy store well there you go see see there in in other places like for example in puerto rico there is a toys r us and it's close to the mall and there's no toy stores in the mall that i would say make a big competition to toys r us uh but honestly how things are in Puerto Rico there. I mean, after this hurricane that we got hit with uh, last year, I don't know if many people will be giving the Toys R Us in Puerto Rico that much of a run for their money. Uh, I did hear something about KB Toys coming back at a smaller capacity, which KB was where I got my Super NES when I was uh, when I was a kid and I never really went to Toys R Us that much. I did like it, but uh, but it wasn't like a place where I was always, I, I always like gravitating towards the smaller uh, toy stores. But, you know, it is a shame. It, it is, it is, it is a shame. Uh, and of course it doesn't help that there are more Walmarts than there are Toys R Us's here in the US. It doesn't help that Amazon has a grip on the toy market. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of Burger Kings should be closed in Germany because of some hygienic issues. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I remember Toys R Us uh, very, very, I, we, we, me and my mom uh, would always go around Black Friday and 
I didn't understand at the time how terrible Black Friday was, but it was it was a cool day. It was like a day where we would go to Toys R Us and then we would go buy Christmas ornaments. That was actually really fun, but it had to be really, really early. So but anyway, uh, Toys R Us, uh, Toys R Us was a was a is still going to go on. So say you want to go get yourself something like a game system or a figurine or something that you've seen in Toys R Us or you've heard is there, there's a good possibility that that store, if you know it's closing, they're probably going to just give it to you. So I'm going to see if I can go to a Toys R Us and get a Switch cheaper, uh, see if I could find a Switch. But honestly, you got to go now because if they're liquidating stores, then they're just not going to... Um, they're not going to last and it, it is a shame, but I'm, I am, uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm not really bummed out. I mean, this was something that was, that I knew was coming. They declared bankruptcy. Obviously they spend more money than they make. So RIP, uh, Toys R Us. I know that you were a part of a bunch of kids childhoods, but you guys can't be can't sustain and nobody goes but uh here's a little bit of the pro league hack news today in our toys r us they mainly sell lego puppet accessories and table games yeah that's awesome they do that as well too it, it, toys r us here they're just more focused on babies <laughs> they incorporated babies r us but it turns out babies r us they they actually end up closing first <laughs> because they decided to open them separately kids are us or babies are us but it's not really mainly focused it's it's mainly focused on toys but anyway um but yeah they're mainly focused on toys on board games tabletop games but anyway a pro starcraft player has been arrested for suspicion of match fixing and who says that crime doesn't pay in the video game industry a starcraft player has been arrested on suspicion of match of match fixing korean news site neighbor sports is reporting that more than a hundred other people have been arrested for the use of an illegal betting site associated with the game according to never a report from busan yonsei police station said that it had arrested a professional player of suspicion on suspicion of operation toto operation toto like like Dorothy's dog Toto I'll get you I'll send your little dog too <laughs> Toto that's what we'll name our operation Toto Busong Young say well if all the single ladies from Busong Young say would like to come to my channel and take a, a look I will definitely definitely put a ring on it <laughs> okay toto <laughs> oh my god i also remember toto from from that africa song on suspicion of operation toto i passed the range down in africa this is why are you changed <laughs> an illegal betting site as well as a match fix as match fixing at last year's bexco starcraft tournament the player who is not named is accused of stake of taking 4.5 million won around a uh, three pounds four thousand two hundred dollars from deliberately losing the match a second person also reported to be a starcraft pro was arrested for operating a second gambling shop a fresca tv who is responsible for significant parts of the starcraft esports scene issued a statement saying 
Uh, the news of match fixing in StarCraft that broke this morning has caused many fans, players, and organizers to worry. <laughs> you should be fucking worried. You should be. Uh, oh, man. Once the ongoing police investigation concludes, a Fresca TV says that the relevant player will be permanently banned from all esports competitions organized by a Fresca TV and prize money will be confiscated. Ooh, I hope you didn't waste all of that in buying Sim City packs. <laughs> oh, my God. How dumb do you have to be to fix matches? You get caught. You know that if you're really, really good and all of a sudden you lose in like a way that's kind of like, um, that doesn't sound like something that he would lose. Like, they're going to look at it and go, well, either A, you're having a bad day or B, What did Deficio do? No, yeah, what happened to Deficio? I know who Deficio is, but what did he do? What what did Deficio do, Spawner? Don't tell me that he was fixing matches. Or he endorsed a, a website for, for that. I don't know. It just goes to show you that, like, you're, if you're, you're like... Being a competitive pro gamer and making money, to me, it seems like it's a dream job. Why on earth would you endanger your dream job by doing that, by getting a little more greedy? I mean, you get sponsored, you get full benefits, you get six figures of income. You're in the Korean StarCraft League. I mean, this is, you're basically an NBA player if you're a professional StarCraft player. He fixed matches long time ago and got caught and got banned from casting or anything for a couple of some periods. Oh my lord, Deficio. <laughs> oh, Deficio, Deficio. Well, there you go. I'm glad to see that at the very least. Even the contacts of players that were working together got banned. Well, I, I'm I'm glad that Riot Games and the league has a, a lot of mercy to give you, Deficio, because that was uh that's usually a black mark. If you get caught gambling, I mean, look at what's going on with Pete Rose. I mean, they won't let him into the Hall of Fame because he's banned because of betting for gambling. But but of course, uh, you know, the players can can get like suspended for cheating and using steroids and they'll eventually be in the hall of fame because they clean themselves up you see no it wasn't permanent i know the fischio is around I actually see i think he's uh, yeah i think the, the very the very little bit of of league of legends uh nalcs that i watch i do know that the fischio excuse me i do know that the fischio is is still around I need something for my sinuses. Crap. Yeah, but Deficio. Oh, you. <laughs> oh. I would know a lot about what makes a good or a bad caster because I don't play League of Legends as much anymore. But uh, they do kind of look like tools from time to time. So I guess they probably would have been better if they just got rid of. Oh, I do like Freak. I like Freak. I like Monte Cristo. I like Jat. I do like Jat. Uh, I like uh, I like Freak as well too. I like his uh, how he narrates the champion spotlights. He like I always liked Freak. Uh, Monte Cristo. Uh, I like him when he casts on the Overwatch League. Monte Monte is actually like very passionate. Um, uh i also like uh okay shocks is not just makeup <laughs> shocks okay shocks is a, is a pretty face i like shocks but 
but I don't think that Shox is like a fake gamer girl. I do think that she's really into the League of Legends. I saw her video about how she just how she got into sports journalism, but then she just really likes uh, League of Legends. Of course, Shox. Uh, Spawners, oh, Spawners just hammering on shocks. Jeez, that's terrible. <laughs> that's so mean. But, um, oh, I also like, uh, oh, uh, but what you're saying is that she's only, she's, I've never actually seen shocks stream, so this is not going to turn into an anti shocks video <laughs> stream. I do like shocks. Shocks is, um, and she also does good interviews as well too uh, especially the one when when she interviewed uh dyrus when he retired i thought that that was a really good interview i kind of thought i was like i don't know what i would ask someone who's feeling emotional after their last game uh is you like her personality but she's just a butterface <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beer holder <laughs> Oh, Saturday night, you, you and Spawner, man. But you know what? I, I, I get what you guys mean. But anyway, oh, I also like Crumbs. Crumbs is also is also pretty cool. Crumbs, I actually saw, uh, I saw an old game when Crumbs was playing with uh, Dignitas, and uh, and uh, he does make good predictions that I like when they call started calling him Crumbledore. But I hate people that wear makeup just to cover the, their face. Yeah, crumbs. Crumbs is actually I, I like crumbs. Uh, I liked double lift a little bit more. A little bit more as a commentator. I don't like him as a player. He's such a he's such a hot shot. He's such a fucking maverick. But. He has casting some years ago. I think Crumbs is doing, uh, yeah. <laughs> TSM is, uh, I like to call, I actually told, uh, a, a manager of mine at work. She said, uh, I like to call TSM the little engine that, that can't, you know, the little engine that could, well, I'll just call TSM the little engine that can't because they always lose no matter they have a big fan base but they lose all the time but anyway away from league talk <laughs> away from league talk is yes when people leave that epic team they once had that's when they and then had it that's it yeah that's very true the far cry 5 is going to have microtransactions but they're only cosmetic and t or time saving only. <sighs> oh dear fucking Jesus Christ. <sighs> Roster change and in some cases gets worse. Yeah, they've got Mithy. They've got some other dudes, Sven, Mithy. Yeah, you know how it is. They, they, the it's the EA excuse. It's the well, some players don't have enough time because they have real jobs, so we're here to offer them and help them. But no, no, that's not what it is. It's is cosmetic or time saving only. Uh, I think time saving means only pay to win or something else but let's read the article let's see what they mean this may not be bad because i heard initially that they weren't going to be this bad but let's see uh, five, uh far cry 5 single player campaign will be playable offline and it has cosmetic and time saver microtransactions that's a new trailer above by the way uh According to Ubisoft executive producer Dan Hay in a recent interview with GameSpot, he Hay says Far Cry 5 will have microtransactions for single player. Boo! And head to head multiplayer, but he stresses no content is locked behind a paywall. Okay. 
We have set up the game to be generous. Hay says, nothing is locked away. You can go out and explore and the game will reward you for exploring. I'm sure they will implement it. Reduce your loading time by... You do think... You think that EA would be trying to find a way to do that. Like, lock your settings. And then when you pay for that transaction, it's like a... Well, they already... Uh, Ubisoft already got caught putting code away that would make Watch Dogs 1 look like Watch Dogs did when it was announced. So... They've done this before. They just didn't charge for it. GameSpot goes on to say, Far Cry 5's microtransactions are cosmetic only. I don't care if they're only cosmetic. You're still selling them. Overwatches are, are, are all cosmetic. But they still try to find ways to get you to get them. Oh, and uh, will not affect gameplay. However, earlier in the article, they say, Hey says, real money purchases are available to those who wish to speed up their game process, which muddies the waters depending on what you call gameplay. We reached out to Ubisoft for clarification. They say all in-game items can be acquired through gameplay. They also say that there are items you can acquire through microtransactions to save time, but which aren't necessary for progression. Exactly how these items save you time was not made clear, but Assassin's Creed Origins, another Ubisoft game, had a time savers category of microtransactions for things like unlocking map icons and buying crafting materials. So basically, time saving is pay to win. That's what it means. Pay to win. Time saving means pay to win. You can get the weapon that you want. You can get the, the, the area that you like to reach out to. You can get these things in the game. But Ubisoft, they're greedy fucks as well too. So they figured, you know what? Some people don't have the time. They have all the stress and all this job that they have to work. All this jobity job, job, jobs. All the jobs. And they can't do it. They can't do it. Except me that I've beaten multiple games without buying any microtransactions. And I've beaten them without your help, Ubisoft. <sighs> Ubisoft also explained that Far Cry 5 is the first time in the series that you'll be able to customize your character with new weapons, vehicles, or other gear unlocking as you progress the game, OR you buy them! Or you buy them. Again, none of this is behind a paywall, so though you can buy premium customization items for real. Zombie! What is going on? How are you doing? Hope you're doing good. I hope you are doing good. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad that you're here with us here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Ubisoft stresses that they that they do not affect gameplay and they're yeah. This is quilting zombie. I know which zombie you're talking about, but she was the first exactly. Here at least. <laughs> um I'm also the irony is that uh they're they're a zombie. There is another streamer there's a streamer that's also named Zombie, and she's also an artist as well, too. She is really, really good. She is really, really good as well. But uh, but yes, Quilting Zombie was the first, and then a zombie followed us up later. So we have two zombies, and they're both artists. So I guess that means that all the zombies will be artists eventually. Oh, yeah. Infected! Yeah. Infected with art? Yeah! Good, just waiting on roommates to wake up so I can put my new bed frame in. Yay! 
Oh yes, quilting zombie is is uh she quilts, she draws, she constructs uh jewelry, she works with leather and uh she's always uh working with different uh art artistic mediums, so she's always switching it up. And she is uh, getting ready to build a bed frame. <laughs> I'm actually very happy. Uh, uh, it's also really cool of you to, to wait for your uh, for your roommates. I'd be like, ah, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Fico, stop it! I'm trying to sleep. And she plays Hearthstone as well too. So, so please give her a follow. Do you stream playing Hearthstone Zombie? Because if you do, I'd like to hop in once and and or, or do you just play it just uh, because you said that your PC uh you were just working on getting a PC on lazy days? Okay. All right. Hearthstone is uh it's one of those games that I kind of just kind of didn't gravitate too much to but uh but anyway, uh there is a, uh, it is a game that I do like, so. But anyway, let's go back to the, uh, to the stories. Now, if you don't, if you don't remember, uh, a while back, uh, I said that, um, that Fortnite was coming out on mobile. Well, in less than 12 hours, uh, it became the most downloaded app in the Apple Play Store. Now, this little chart here shows uh <laughs> it's uh it's free to rage. Eh, but but you know it's it's also free to rage as well too. <laughs> My friend Victaru, uh he also plays Hearthstone. He sometimes streams. Wish he streamed more because he's a really good player and he's very charismatic and I and I think that he would be a great streamer. So, but he's also super busy at his job. So basically, it says that uh it is number 1 in 13 countries it ranks uh in 12 countries number two to five in four countries number six to uh ten but basically fortnite for your games uh, is is uh, for your mobile is the most downloaded application ever uh so that beats out uh pokemon go so congrats uh fortnite uh you guys are officially better than PUBG. Now you're global and you're better than them. You are destroying them. Uh, and yes, it's only and there are plenty of free to rage games. Uh, so uh, and I think Fortnite is one of them. <laughs> but careful, they have microtransactions. So this is news that will make Neck happy. Uh, Warframe reaches 38 million players. And this is another free to play game, another free to range game. So, according to IGN, uh, Warframe turns five years old on March 21st, and they've also rolled out a bunch of events. And uh, in 2003, it went on an open beta launch, which reached over 38 million. That's a t that's a total of 38 million 83,936. As you can see. It's just gone up year after year after year. Free to shit game more like <laughs> So yeah. So a lot of a lot of this stuff is at year 1. I mean it grew exponentially from year 2. It looks like in the 3rd year that's when it got a bunch. But the Pillar Plains of Idolin, which I actually really like is actually really cool. Here's a couple of more interesting. It says that it racked about a billion total hours played. Um, precisely a billion, 197,906,351 hours. Which is the equivalent of 1,136,747 years. Uh, 52 million Warframes were crafted. 234,000. Oh, the coffee's brewing. You gotta go, zombie. You gotta drink that coffee. You need that liquid courage to build that bed frame. 
Well, I'm talking about Warframe. You gotta get your coffee frame. Brew frame. Frame, frame, frame. Uh, the stalker that terrorizes players' mi mission has been killed 41 million times. And of course... There's some stuff, this community side side of things. There's stuff like uh, <clears throat> a bunch of uh, like all these uh, first round of the Tenogen and all the items that are available. I think that this is uh, the stuff that you make yourself here. Warframe is the example, is the exception of a free to play game done completely right. And I am so happy for them and I hope, I wish for the best, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I wish for the best for them because that game uh, is super fun. Uh, I don't understand always the point of it uh, because I'm just building Warframes and going on, but with that Pillars of Eidolon, uh, I, uh, are there, it's wonderful. It's added a whole bunch of stuff here, so. But let's continue. <laughs> Oh, fucking. Oh, my allergies. No. Oh, anyway. Anyway. Uh, Kofifi. I don't drink Kofifi. But anyway. Um, Prison Escape co-op game. A way out. Lengths revealed. And more. A way out. Is, uh, is this game that's created by the dude that the people that created uh, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. That game was uh, about two to three hours long. Not that long. But, uh, but I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Speaking of sounds, I am learning how to put effects soon. I just got to find a way to turn stuff from a video into a WAV file and then turn it into an MP3. So that's what I want to do. I want to try to figure out how to do that without having to download anything. But if you guys know, if you guys know, I think you guys know. Uh, put the frame, the new frame in Discord I picked up for 25 bucks. Nice. You can use the only converter. Oh, I need. I need to know. Oh, please, please do. Uh, if you guys need to uh, to to paste a a link, let me know. Saturn, actually, you could just per permit, just permit them and and post. But online, not only. Oh. <laughs> it's all good but anyway well you guys post that uh a way out uh creator uh yosef faris uh the guy that said fuck the oscars and flipped the middle finger directly to the camera the guy that was clearly drunk uh they caught up with a little bit of information uh, there was like a 35 minute demo of the game above here so the site if you want to check this out a couple of uh, a couple of uh, things here, but a way out can only bleep can it, 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 it's. Let me click on this online convert. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Thank you. Oh, this is so awesome. So I could do, I could download, convert, video. Wait a minute. Convert, audio converter, convert to wave. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, the YouTube converter. Oh, yes. Uh, permit him again. I like to take, uh, check that out. I like to check that out. I lost my link where's my link okay there we go okay so he said that the, the, so if you want to check out a 35 minute uh preview of the game uh it's up here apparently a way out can only be played in co-op with another human locally or online 
that's fine. I don't like. I don't mind downloading. Uh, if it's a small application and it if it works really well, I I will totally do it. You can only play this game co-op with another human. Uh, thankfully, there is a way to pretty much ensure that someone to play with it. At the Game Awards back, publisher EA announced a friends pass free trial for the game that lets you play the full game if your friend owns it. Really. Set in the 70s, A Way Out focuses on the story of two convicts who are on the run after a prison escape. The game launches on March 23rd. That's just in a few days, actually. But here's a couple of details that that these are the these are kind of sort of like the bread and butter of this of this walkthrough. It says uh, the take the game will take about six to eight hours to finish. Now, developer Hazelight started with just 10 people on the project, but then they got about 40 later in development that only 12 people worked on Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Very impressive. It's a small company. Way Out is definitely not an indie game. Uh, Sony is, is bankrolling this. This is an exclusive only to Sony for a bit. Ferris wrote the script himself, although uh, he worked with a script doctor as well, uh, which is not bad. Uh, working with a with a ghost writer and a script doctor definitely will, will help if yeah, you need somebody to, you know, to fix a typo here and there or some approach. Ferris says EA has been very supportive and hands off. Let's take a look at this downloader that Spawner gave me. Oh. I have a downloader to to actually acquire uh acquire uh videos. I just try to find a way to convert them. Because I could download videos. I have a I have a I have one of those uh in my in my Mozilla browser. So but anyway, uh, first, but I'm going to check that out anyway. I'm going to check out both of them and see which one, which one. I really appreciate the help, Spawner. Thank you very, very much. Uh, according to Faris, uh, you could also convert from it. Okay, so I'm going to check those out in a bit. So, uh, actually, I think, uh, if you'd like, if you guys are interested, you guys, uh, will do our first ever sound effects, uh, We'll do that. Yes, I need to. I need to convert the video into audio. I could download the videos. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I can. I like to check that out too. But yes, I could download. I could. I like to download uh, the the video. I want. I have abilities to download the videos. I'm just trying to find a way to turn them into WAV files. So and I, because I could turn them into MP3s using Audacity but and i can edit them using audacity but i like to be able to but if that downloader does that too i'm gonna check those two out uh we'll check those two out okay we'll check them out we'll check both of those out here so but let's continue uh he says that ea didn't wants to make an apple greener i can say no sure ea won't force you to do that uh-uh not at all. So 100% of the income of Way Out will go to developer Hazelight. EA makes nothing, Ferris says. Sure, sure, yeah, sure, okay, yeah, sure. Of course, EA doesn't make, doesn't want to make money off of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be so naive. EA helps with marketing and support, but apparently gets nothing from sales. Sure. I pronounce audacity always as Auda City. Audacity. Auda City. Audacity. 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 It's the free one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so... 
Uh, let's see. He also acknowledges that EA has a fair share of issues, as all publishers do. They shit and take a pee like everybody else. No, 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 no. You do not compare everybody else to EA. You do not get to fucking dare do that. See, the difference is between the EA and everybody else is that they shit and pee on golden toilets. Uh, Barris is incredibly passionate about a way out and particularly as co-op multiplayer saying that it would turn 10 million to make Lee, it would he would turn down 10 million to make a strictly single player game. What? EA doesn't want you to it would you wouldn't get an opportunity to, you wouldn't get an opportunity to make another game strictly single player if you were offered that amount of money right yeah sure 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 ferris would never make a game with microtransactions you're with ea ferris it's not up to you buddy and there's no plans for a nintendo switch edition at least not yet it's a shame because uh the switch is actually probably one of the more prominent ways that you could actually make uh you could totally uh take advantage of that and and make a make a good game but there you go ferris admitting the game is going to be about six to eight hours there's no microtransactions in it and uh well here we go next bit of information is that we're getting some more stuff from prey this is from the arcane studios account and you see this is the development studio this is the development team uh, they all got like like their eyes are all red i think these are all like lenses this all looks kind of creepy but look at that 6 10 18 up here 6 10 18 moon 6 10 18 here's a calendar june 10th 6 10 18 uh what's uh 6 10 18 well according to the calendar 6 10 18 is on a sunday and 6 10 18 is also the is also the date of the bethesda conference so yes uh arcane studios is announcing something on 6 10 18 at the Bethesda conference. It's probably going to be DLC for Prey. I will be getting that DLC if it's worth it. I want this Typhon shirt. I want this Prey shirt. I want that contact lens thingy. And uh, creepy enough, there's even, yeah, there it is. 6, 10, 18. Look at Pete Hines. Oh my God. He actually is like, that's disturbing. There he goes, 6, 10, 18. So there's going to be more prey, 6, 10, 18. Remember that date. 6, 10, 18! 6, 10, 18! I would always, I would normally miss out on E3 spawner because I know that a lot of it is overhyped bullshit. But, but, now we could critique the E3 conferences together. As uh, as during the week, uh, as uh, next time I will be streaming uh, E3's conferences. We will be streaming the entire thing and I will be posting every single one of those videos on YouTube as well so that you can see. Uh, what I mean about, about missing E3, you mean uh, E3, uh, lately mainly has just become like a show where they promise a lot. They generate a lot of hype. I get it. You got to generate hype for your games that are coming out next year, but that's kind of what it's been known for generating hype and generating stuff. Uh, and while I watch E3 as well to find out what the games that are coming out next year, uh, they don't promote a lot of stuff that's coming out very soon. And a lot of the stuff that's coming out next year, or the years down the road, they don't eventually become the same thing. Uh, and uh, 
Oh, I am going to be streaming, so I too will be will be a part of it as well too. <laughs> and uh, I don't know which days I can do. Obviously, Sunday, which is the Bethesda conference, and Monday, which is a bunch of the conferences, I'll be able to stream them. Yeah. I also I also don't uh, the thing that I don't like about. I think that I don't like about E3 is that a lot of it is about promises. They make promises and, you know, they they can't keep them. But honestly, E3 is still a thing that I like. I would l be with you on voice channel and discuss what you want to see. I would like to, uh, I would be with you on voice channel and discuss what we see if you want it. Oh, see, see, that's, that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. Uh, if we do that, uh, I actually, yeah. Voting the government. <laughs> actually, Spawner, I, I actually wouldn't mind. I, I like that idea. Let's, uh, doing, uh, like a co-cast to, uh, to do, oh yeah, oh yeah, that sounds great. I think, I think, uh, I think that would actually be fun to have another voice in the whole thing. Oh yeah, totally. I'm on, I'm all for it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Spawner and Fico in E3. Booyaka! <laughs> booyaka, booyaka! Let's do it. <laughs> Saturday night says that E3 is similar to voting the government. Oof. Anyway, uh, not, uh, not a good, uh, not a good, uh, bit of news as, as you all saw that, uh, Stephen Hawking, uh, passed away uh, last week and uh, there's a cool little tribute that EVE Online uh, pilots decided that they were going to be lighting up beacons across its galaxy like stuff like this. This is really cool. It just said that uh, science fiction owes a great deal to Stephen Hawking. His ground uh, groundbreaking theories in astrophysics and cosmology helped cement our understanding of everything from black holes to relativity. When, and when he passed away yesterday at age 76, this is an old article, uh, players on the EVE Online community decided to recognize his contribution to science in their own way by covering the night sky in beacons. Called sinusoidal beacons, these modules emit a bright radiant light and are used to open jump bridges that ships can use as a warp destination. On the normal day, seeing a sinusoidal beacon flare up in reason is is reason to panic. It often signals the cavalry has arrived to obliterate you. But yesterday and today, the beacons are appearing across space to tribute Stephen Hawking's appear uh, uh, achievements. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, man. This is... Oh. Oh, this is awesome. I'm glad that uh, that everybody... Uh, thanks to a Reddit thread, a Cariol... Cari... Cariola. Pilots all across New Eden began lighting beacons at 12... 2200 when with mainly staying lit for hours due to in-game rules sinusoidal sinusoidal beacons can only be lit in null sec and low sec areas where no real npc police the image below is a heat map of new eden showing the density of syro sino i can't say that word sinusoidal beacons with massive colorations represent hundreds of lit beacons that is such a great tribute to a great man i'm very 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 uh proud of the the fuck oh oh <laughs> okay hold on that's for the next topic here so so anyway uh what I was saying is that that's a very good uh, tribute to a, to a great man. 
and uh, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of these Eve uh, of these Eve players. So very happy. Uh, I am not working today. Uh, today's my day off. I'm uh, I'm working. Um, I am going to be. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I could do a couple of things here around the house. Uh, but uh, honestly, no, I'm not. I'm not working today. Uh, tonight, I I was just kind of thinking of maybe streaming a little bit as well too. But uh, but no, I'm not. I'm not doing anything tonight, at least. So not not really all that much here. So, but anyway, uh, the next bit of stuff that I want to show you is something that I found kind of interesting. And this is uh, apparently this. I found this in the Wall Street Journal. This guy looks like he's an older dude. Oh my god. How much did he pay? I'm always playing unless I'm sleeping, driving, taking. That is called a gaming addiction. <laughs> if you're playing this when you're not sleeping, oh, he looks like he's 30 years old. He does. He uh he, he definitely uh <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> I'm kidding, Spawner. What? You spend how much? Oh! Oh! Seventy thousand dollars. You spent seventy thousand dollars. On a mobile game! Oh my god! 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 You don't see that as a problem, dude! You spent 70 grand on a... Oh my god! Oh! 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 That's... Yes, Quilting! Yes, Zombie! Yes! That's a down payment for a house. No, that's not a down payment. But you 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 can, you can pay a half of your mortgage. Oh! Oh! Oh my god. $70,000 on a mobile game. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Maybe more. Maybe more. Where do you live, bro? Are you rich? No, it's not like you think about it because you're addicted. That's what an addiction is. That's why this is all terrible for the game industry. Stocks, stocks and futures, stocks and futures. Okay, so what are you like a stockbroker? You paid two thousand. Wait, hold on. I I need to hear. I need to see that again. Excuse me. I need to see this again. I need to see this again. I I need to see this again. I need to. I need to see this again. Oh! 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 You paid 
dollars for a character and then you leveled him up with an extra two hundred two thousand dollars what is wrong with you what is wrong with you this ladies and gentlemen is what a whale looks like that is a fucking whale if i've ever seen one this bro is a whale holy shit twenty five hundred dollars I'm actually okay with this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and this is the best actual role I've ever had. <laughs> oh my god, there is a there is a scene of this. Oh my god, there's a scene for this. There's a scene of people that are opening up Fucking loot crates for oh! Stop! Five quid left in the bank, and I'm gonna spend sixty quid. I've already spent one hundred and twenty quid. That's a lot for me. You have that much money left in your bank account. That's no, bro. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No. Who doesn't have a stable fucking job? Because I'm in uni. Give me this. Oh, 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 it makes it so much better because you're in the university. Give me the Give me the This, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's considered gambling to do microtransactions. This is, this is terrible. No, 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 I, I may be, I may be, <laughs> I think I think I think you think that I'm that I'm tr insulting you, Spotter. I don't mean like like that, but I just find it like I, like there has to be something that triggers these 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 people to expend as much money. Now, Saturday night, you said that you didn't like how they portrayed him, uh, but uh, but I'd like to get a little more information. There are three enemies on the list has not seen. Well, I have not seen Fate Stay Night. Yes, uh, yes, Saturday Night. Uh, can you can you allow Zombie to? Uh, can you get permission to for Zombie to post a link? Uh, if 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 you need to post more than one link, let let him know or. Uh oh! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! I missed what he said. I missed what he said. I miss what he said. Hold on. I miss what he said. Yes, you spend a thousand seventy thousand dollars. Let's see. Let's see what let's see what he says. Okay. This is your justification. This is your justification. People spend $18 on a movie and they feel moved? That's your justification for spending $70,000! On a... On a mobile game. Now I get it. I may be... I may be a little emotional based on this, but... You don't feel the compulsion of going to the movies all the time and spending to go watch those movies. You know, I go to the movies early so that I could go to watch them for like $5 for the matinee. And you know what else? You can always rent them later and then you watch them and that's it. Well, you know, cam girls are they're they're smart too. <laughs> they're they're using what they're using the gifts that God gave them. But but still, you know, I guess if it's okay for them to spend money on cam girls, I guess it's okay, but I mean $70,000 on a on a mobile game. That is just See earlier zombie we were talking about about how it it cost like $458 to get everything from the Sims 4 
I'll check your video out in a second, but Jesus Christ, 70 grand, that is terrible. There's just nothing for you to be proud of, dude. I mean, if you're rich. And also, League of Legends is free to play too. Four grand for an hour. Well, that is a good way to get through college. <laughs> and also, uh, I think you have to pay in order to get in into that into that cam site, I think. So that is legitimately what you're paying for. But a game like this is free to play, but it's clearly designed for this do it this do fool and every other fool like him to spend money oh my lord this is the date this is why i hate microtransactions it's free to watch really cam sites are free and and every and the money that they make is just like tips like the tip jar like like bits in, in twitch Oh, I have not. I have. I, I uh, then I've this. I'm. I'm a little in the past. Then I didn't know that that was like a free. I know that uh, when I was a teenager, I used to. I used to like. Oh, you got to put in your credit card information, or the premium like ones. Wow. Oh wow. That is. That's a lot more information that I wanted to admit. But you know what? I know all of you did it. <laughs> Okay, let's continue with this. With, with let's continue with the sadness. Yes, it does move you. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, it does move you to the verge of bankruptcy. Holy crap! Look. Okay. Okay. I, uh, stop. Stop. Okay. Okay. You see that 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 look at you look to your to the right. Oh no, I'm not saying that. Uh, yeah, every, every these sites. Th this is for acclamation for everybody. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, and trust me when I tell you, I do think that there are camboy sites out there. This is look at the. I will say this. This guy has an excellent figurine collection. Look at that. Look at all those. Look at all those figurines there. Look at that. He's got uh, a, a couple of Mega Mans. He's got a couple of sabers all over. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I think I think I think I know what what you're what you're talking about. When I'm not, when I'm not playing the game, I go driving or shopping. If my parents ask me, I do the dishes. You actually have enough money to do to go shopping, but it's not a total loser. I showed it to him already. <laughs> yeah, I, I I got the private. I got it. I, I'm gonna check that out later, zombie. Thank you. I'm also gonna check the 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 YouTube video that I. They don't know how much I spent on the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think, I would think that that would be a thing that you would tell your parents. Also. You clearly know how terrible that is if you don't want to tell your parents. Huh. Oh my god. I think it's fine as long as I'm having fun. Hey, hey, if you know how much money you've pumped into this game and you're having the time of your life. I'm happy for you. I'm actually happy for you. But you have spent $70,000 on one game. 
You have admitted that you have spent... 500 to, to 2500 dollars on scaling your character. That is... That is terrible. Yes! 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 That's why this is gambling! Because it exposes people to the same techniques that people use to get you to gamble! $70,000! This should be illegal! But you know what? You are a 31-year-old. Uh, it is. Uh, you are a 31-year-old man, so you are technically, technically allowed to do this. But you, developers, need to be held accountable because this is fucking gambling. This is ga This is goddamn gambling. You are right. Critics, you are absolutely 100% right. $70,000. Sony's animation subsidiary Aniplex, publisher of the game, declined to comment. Oh, what's wrong, Aniplex? Oh, by the way, I love Aniplex. But you know what? You guys are fucking scum. Scum of the fucking earth. Holy shit. 70,000. That's a whale. That is a fucking whale. That is the whaliest whale I have ever seen. But you know what? I do think... Uh, I think uh, I, that I see... Uh, but you know what? It's like Saturday Night said. I think that they did portray him like... Uh, oh, he lives with his parents. Oh, he probably doesn't have a girlfriend. Oh, look at him. It's just a typical gamer. I get that. Yeah, but Aniplex is a sponsor. They're they're the subsidiary. They're the animation house. They're the guys that make Face Stay Night, right? Face Stay Night, Fate uh, Apocrypha. They're the guys that make An Aniplex are the ones that do the animation, right? So yeah, they uh, they have to get a cut. I mean, it's their anime. <laughs> they have to, I guess. But anyway, uh. Uh, you said, uh, oh, it's not them? Okay. Well, well, even so, I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is just, that is a lot of money. Uh, if you saw the figurine collection of the guy, you will see that 90% of it was just Gundam figurines, face state night characters, and some randoms. Nothing for Mighty. I know his taste. <laughs> uh, that guy has money. I even think that he is rich, but he's not showing it off. And he has a really healthy lifestyle with his parents. He's doing the household and he's making tons of money. Well, you know what? As I said before, uh, Type Moon is a creator of, Fate State, of the Fate Universe. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me just get some clarification. Okay. So if you're if you're happy doing this, that's fine, but it's still, uh, <sighs> these practices are going to continue because of people like this guy, because that's who these developers go after. Anime fans that are with an excessive income, as I've discussed weeks ago, it's not a lot that requires these games it's only a small percentage of people that invest but they invest so much that that is why these games he's a stock market eggs uh, uh, advisor well even so it's still leading to the same result it's still getting people addicted to this game. I personally don't dislike the video because of this dude. I just think that it's just terrible. Let me take a look at that video that that uh, the zombie sh uh, threw at me. Hold on. What was that video? 
Oh, oh, I need to watch this one later. This is this will be another one. Ten shocking anime scenes that are totally creepy. Huh. If they're not spoilerific, are they? <laughs> anyway, um Anyway, let's uh let's continue. Uh but anyway, I do agree that uh, he 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 may just be addicted, but you know, but the fu the th fundamental fact is that they're they're using the same techniques to get people into into these these games and also they're using these these uh these functions these 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 practices to get the whales and that is not good in the slightest however not everything is bad news not everything in video games is a depressing sh shallow hold <laughs> uh as a uh, rad according to lap roots uh it says High School of the Dead is actually one that I want to look forward to. Uh, Monogatari, I heard it was pretty good, but I'm going to check that out. It is The Riches. I've seen videos from The Riches. They're kind of like a wannabe watch mojo. So, uh, but I want to, I'll check that video. Uh, I'll check that video at the end of the stream. Uh, Racing auto Auditory Display or RAD is an audio based user interface that enables players with visual impairments to start to play standard video games in folk that focus on racing. It uses multiple sonification techniques to translate the game's video inputs into sounds that alert the player of what is happening with the track and vehicle. Rad empowers blind players to succeed. <clears throat> High School of the Dead... Uh <laughs> I heard it really isn't creepy, but I heard it's pretty cool. An estimated 253 million people live with some kind of vision impairment and might enjoy this new game option. Uh, this, uh, uh, according to Brian A. Smith, a computer science PhD candidate at Columbia Engineering, who developed the project uh, with uh, T.C. Chang, the professor of computer science, Sri Niyar, uh, that the RAD is a first system that makes it possible for people who are blind to play a real 3D racing game with full 3D effects, realistic vehicle physics, complex racetracks, and a standard PlayStation 4 controller. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The RAD has two primary techniques of sonification. Using on speech audio to communicate data one is referred to the re in the related paper as the sound slider this conveys the car's speed and trajectory the second is the turn indicator system which is able to tell players about the traits and an upcoming turn such as length proximity sharpness and direction to use the sound slider players listen to the sound of the car's engine it will move to the left and uh, right as the car veers to the track a player will continuously try to keep the noise in the center of the prevent an impact oh my god this i need to see this demo hold on let's see if it uh, if it shows Okay. Okay, I hear I hear sounds coming from both sides. It sort of like changes sounds back and forth. It's like binaural binaural technology. Oh, this is so cool. So it's like it's like it's basically is like it, there's different sounds coming from each in from each side of it and it sort of just gets the Oh, thank you. Thank you, zombie. Oh man, thank you. Man, I'm getting tons of links today. <laughs> let's uh let's uh speed through this a little bit here. Uh just cut down a couple of these things here. Uh, I'm also going to include an article here that uh, I've been I've been sort of just like uh, 
stuff about how the Switch is getting a ton of indie games. This is a good way in which uh, indie game companies are giving uh, games a new ch- a new chance to shine. The Steam da- the Steam store does get filled up mm. with so many games. And they kind of get lost in the shuffle, and it's a great way to make the game, uh, give it a new, a uh, new life. Like Darkest Dungeon, obviously, uh, Enter the Gungeon, as well as uh, Super Meat Boy. I read this entire article, and it is actually a very, very good article to read. Pretty much just explaining. It's sort of like going through like a utopia where where some where Switch uh, where Switch players are are. Are getting uh this this stuff here but anyway let's begin because guess what ladies and gentlemen we've got something nightmare uh oh what's going on oh like this exactly why I hate portals <laughs> <laughs> yeah baby oh yeah come on let's do this Geralt of Rivia oh my god he's in Soul Calibur <laughs> oh my god this is awesome Come on, show me his move set. Challenged a Witcher, must have had a death wish. Oh, okay. This is like a cutscene. Yeah, this is a cutscene. Okay, here's the fight. Okay, you could use the fire technique. Oh. 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 oh my lord oh my lord Woo. excuse me oh my god oh my god he already saw it uh yeah oh yeah no, no, no! This is Soul Calibur, man. This is this is Soul Calibur. Geralt is coming to Soul Calibur. There's not going to be any more Witch games, Witcher games. Witcher's done. It was supposed to be a trilogy, and they've done with it. So, this is another video that uh, I'd like to show you guys here. This is like from an upcoming. Uh, this is from the. We were going to just ace us out of park. Like we just made one. We know everything there is about like console games. We got this, right? No. Yeah, you. You don't know anything when you're starting out these games. Like such a crazy idea because there were enough successful, like success stories of small teams making these huge games. Dark Siders, man. We know what we're making now. Finally, after after these years of kind of grinding it out, trying to figure out like what feels right. There was like no UI in the game at all, and they were like alphas in a month, and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> You're gonna pay for that at the end, where it's like, "What is this? I don't know. What is that? I don't know. How do these tie together? I don't know." Uh, that's a that's awesome, but I don't really know anything. Get that to run. What am I here? What am I doing in my life? It was, I love it was these fantastic. props, though. I mean, we had been through the trenches together. We had made multiple products. Uh, we felt like we had a, a fan base that enjoyed the titles. Oh, uh, I, I, I do not want a uh, typical or what you would expect type of score so they encouraged me to really keep pushing and see how um, far i could push on the, you know this whole thing man they look like they all sound like they're about to cry it felt so special it just felt like a bunch of guys having fun making making a game i'll i'll, I'll take that with me forever obviously when we went into it we didn't know we were creating something that was going to last for years and and have a sequel i mean the hope is always there I'm just going to make the game I want to make. I've got both of these games and they look so cool. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to add these two games. I'm going to play these. 
And of course they're covering because they're doing Dark Stalker Dark Siders 3. So this is like the announce. This is sort of like uh, a look into uh, um, THQ Nordic, which are the guys that are making this uh, the the next Dark Siders game. They made the first one. Like they're talking about it, and then they're gonna talk about obviously the sequel. I actually really want to see this <laughs> because this is a good a good a good sort of like a look into like game developers uh and what they're doing and Stuff like that you go to like 20 meetings everybody's depressed because stuff sucks or broken or doesn't look good and then you go to that one meeting where it all comes together and the cutscenes there and you're like wow that was really fucking cool hey language oh man this is cool this is like promoting a dark siders uh documentary and i think i'll definitely watch it uh oh look it's coming out next week i think yeah it's next week march 27th would be the uh next tuesday so actually like i actually like this so definitely we'll look into this here as well so let's go on to the next video which it talks a little bit about on one core mechanical concept the way out you'll hopefully be enjoying for 10 50 100 hours halo's gun feel bayonetta's witch time mount your friends uh physics each one should feel good enough to keep you playing no matter how repetitious it might actually be uh well you gotta make it fun too of course a way out is almost stubbornly trying to do the exact opposite Every time the game's director, Joseph Farris, and I finish playing a section of his co-op narrative adventure game, he turns around, smiles, and tells me that the game will never do that again. Look, I'm telling you that my game is, is, is pretty much the greatest game in the world. It's the greatest game in the world. It's better than the series. It's better than everything. It's better than the Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. Fuck your movies. Fuck you. In half an hour of skipping between various scenes, I've crept through stealth sections, gone spear fishing, taken part in a police chase, balanced on wheelchairs, button mashed through 2D brawler combat, and played Connect 4. Hmm. Trying to do too much in your game can also be bad. Putting all your eggs in one basket might not be good. Ah, suck it, loser. A single run throughs aimed for six to eight hours. There's going to be a lot to do. Farris has a neat term for how he created the interactive elements in his prison escape narrative, finding gameplay. Rather than creating a mechanic to build a story around, Farris and his team created a story and then searched for the right ways to inject gameplay into it. The result, he promises, is a game with truly cinematic pacing, peaks and troughs of action alongside dramatic storytelling that constantly offers new ways to interact. Okay, that was pretty cool. You actually need, uh, did you need to actually be with a co-op uh, person, an actual human to do this. So that's actually very cool. The game's much talked about visual approach, remaining almost constantly in a shifting split screen view, even when playing with a friend online, is a gorgeous delivery method for that idea. An early second. Look, 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 Saturday night. Look, you, you have to play the game. You have to play my game. Look, look, I am telling you that it is going to be the greatest game ever. Look, if anything, if the game isn't great, then I'll go buy pudding for your mother. How you like that? Would you like me to go buy pudding for your mother? I will buy her. I will go and I get her some great banana pudding for your mother. If this game is not good. Section sees one player trying to calmly drive a car through a police barricade while the other hides from view. So the game shrinks the hiding player's view to a third of the screen, letting the driver see where they're going while communicating something of the claustrophobia of the situation to the other player. The best scene- Like... Heavy rain? Like... Okay. You know, I've played so far sees both lead characters escaping from a hospital. Here, the split screen disappears entirely while a single shot follows Vincent and Leo in turn, the camera flying through air vents or down stairwells to keep up. By switching character, the game's switching player too. Each okay, see that. For the other. See, that is cool. That is a cool way to flip them around. That is a really cool way to flip the content back and forth. Having a, just doing it uh, every single one, just, just flipping it around. At least in the demo I, I do like that. Leo fighting his way out of a corridor in a scene that directly references Old Boy's famous single shot fight. It's a truly brilliant way to keep the tension of the scene flowing, all while giving both players something interesting to do. Well, as I said, they're just putting, they're putting everything all in one basket, basically. So, 
I, I actually admire them for doing that. I love this comes out correctly. Well, that moment's critical to the story, and there are game over states for failing your actions. Faris promises many more one-off gameplay touches that you'll only come across. Oh come on, really? A list of extra little experiences for those who want to spend the time looking. Cut Dark, act four. Arm wrestling, baseball, and an arcade machine. That wealth of different gameplay elements might have taken its toll a little in the animation department. Yeah. Faris says the game has over twenty thousand animations. Twenty thousand animations, dude. Joseph, really? 20,000? More than some major AAA games, apparently. That's partly down to Faris's exacting approach to depicting both lead characters as distinctly different people. While they're definably different in their approach to escape, broadly, Vincent's thoughtful <laughs> and quiet while Leo's impulsive and violent, the differences between them are more subtle, too. Both characters were mocapped by different actors, mm. and each character can perform almost every action in the game, effectively doubling the number of animations. Wow. Okay, so I'll give them credit for this. The game is ambitious. Maybe too ambitious, but hey, if you've got the money and you've got the ambition, do it, man. I'd say I would have gone smaller like an indie 2A like Ninja Theory did with Senua's Sacrifice with Hellblade. But hey, if you're given the funds, you do with them what you like. Just make sure that you, do, you know, don't, don't screw up. While it's impressive as an artistic commitment, parts of our demo see both characters' movements looking fairly jerky and basic in the most freely playable moments, which detracts Ooh. from its usual cinematic quality a little. But I feel almost churlish having a problem with that when it's clear how much A Way Out wants to offer. If that's churlish? To for a game that truly offers you something new in every single scene, then I think I'll end up happy to pay it. Faris himself is bullish about his vision for the game. When I ask if he ever felt the need to include repeated action sequences to keep the archetypal gamer invested, he was uncompromising. He tells me that if people want to play a run and gun game, they should play Gears of War. This isn't that. This is better. I <laughs> oh, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Don't make claims you can't back up with proof, okay? You ever heard of lawbreakers? You ever heard of Clip Bazinski? You ever heard about that? None of that uh, $39.99 multiplayer only bullshit? Sure. Okay. Oh, and uh, as a reminder, this game's getting published by EA. Just as a reminder. Be very happy for him to be proved right. Want to see more from a way out? We've got 28 minutes of gameplay with the game's director. Look at the look, look, this is going to be, this is the greatest, this is the greatest, look, this is the greatest gameplay video ever made. And you know why? Because we, we said, I said, fuck the Oscars. And I flipped the finger in front of the people, say, fuck the Oscars. You know what? <laughs> oh, dear God. No, I'm not subscribing to IGN. Screw that. Okay, let's go to the next video, which is up a game that I was told is actually pretty cool, so I'd like to take a look at it. And What we're trying to do is create a game that Battletech fans will recognize. And to people that have never seen it before, the first thing should be, whoa, that's cool, giant robots, right? That's awesome. And then you get under it and you find out there's a mm. whole simulation putting you in the role of a mercenary mech commander. Oh. There's actually two Oops. game <laughs> loops in Battletech. What you do in a mission, commanding your mechs on the battlefield. Oh. And then there's the mercenary game that takes place a level above that. You're going to be managing your mercenary company's finances. Oh, this is so cool. System system. I'm a huge fan of the Mech Warrior series. I love Mech Warrior. And Battletech is apparently based off of uh, what was, was, was spawned off Mech Warrior. So. Choosing what kind of jobs you want to take. It's an open ended game, which means you can fly wherever you want, you can do whichever missions you want. Okay. Securing bases, steal things and bring them back. Just a huge variety of kinds of things that really keep you very dynamic on the battlefield. You know what? I like that, the, that these guys have a. Uh... <laughs> I need to check out Discord in a moment. <laughs> different kind of tactical challenges. While you're traveling, oh, I love these mech designs. There's all sorts of things that can happen on the ship. 
Your mech warriors can recover from wounds. You can upgrade your ship, repair, refit, customize your battle mech. Oh. Different events will just suddenly pop up. Three weeks into space, two of your mech warriors get into a fight. Do you break up the fight? Do you let it go? Do you take somebody's sides? And every decision you make has repercussions. A battle isn't just about destroying the other team. The battle is about making money. Resources. Oh, and I really, really like rare. this. You're going to be salvaging and upgrading and building up your mechs with the resources. This is cool. Over time. This looks overwhelming. This looks overwhelming, but I'll uh, I'll have to take How a look here. You're inflicting and wear can affect your salvage, which can affect your bottom line. And of course, receiving damage, all of that takes time and money to fix. You're managing time, money and morale. Happy mech warriors give you more battlefield combat options that augment the... D Don't say the word battlefield. That may confuse people. ...abilities of your battle mechs. There are all these interlocking systems and touching one affects another one. It's a giant engine that you are manipulating. The combination this is of the tactical combat, the event system, really the things cool. you can encounter as you're flying around space. Someone can sit down, have a blast, and then take a step into the Battletech universe with us. I think I'm interested. I think I'm interested. I think I'm interested. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of uh, of the Mech Warrior games. I'm a big fan of of this. So let's take a look as well. So let's take a look at a let's take a look at Kratos being a father. You miss, and I will kill you, son. <gasps> We do not fight because the world makes us fight. We fight for a great Come, purpose. son! Kill the wolf! We forge into the unknown. That's the same arrow? The promise we made. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's a... That's like a fire titan or something. Nothing will stand in our way. Oh. Again. Again! And again! And again! And again! You will make you into a killer! I'll make you into a killer, son! I'll make you into a killer! <laughs> I, I really want that game. <laughs> I really want that God of War game. Rare is alive! Rare is alive! Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. I'm sorry, who said that this was the funniest game ever? Who said that? Uh, Polygon. Uh, they don't like video games anyway, so they don't matter. Uh, la la la. Whoa! <laughs> A golden age of multiplayer. Shimmer me timbers. Let's engage a battle, my taste. The best pirate game we've ever played. Oh, go. Oh! Mm-hmm. This may be the last good Xbox game that's out there in years. What the fuck? <laughs> Pirates! It's the black hole, mateys! Swap the poop deck! Whoa. <gasps> the Kraken! Release the Kraken! Boys, the Kraken has a boot! The Kraken has a boot! Oh, wait a minute. What was that last part? Uh, Kraken! Warning, Xbox Live required. Gold required to play Xbox One. Here's some good news for Saturnite. 
えー、モンスターハンターワールドですが、えー、と本当に皆様のおかげでですね、えー、今年の1月の26日に発売させていただきました。Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you this is in Japanese. I know you guys were talking about anime a minute ago, so this won't bother you. なんと今、出荷本数750万本を超えておりまして、この750万本というのはですね、カプコンの歴代のタイトルの中でも一番売れたということ。Ever! Ever, ever. This is Capcom's best selling game ever. Ever. Suck on that, EA. なるようでして、本当に嬉しく思っております。えー、本当に皆様のおかげです。えー、そしてですね、いよいよですね、大型のアップデート、いよいよ迫ってまいりました。えー、日にちの方がですね、3月の20日に、oh, アップデートさせていただきたいと思っております。でですね、あの目玉になるのがですね、今回、イビルジョーというモンスターが、えー、追加されます。シリーズではですねおなじみのモンスターなんですけどすごく食欲旺盛でですねすごく凶暴なモンスターになっておりますので皆さんぜひ気をつけてくださいデビルジョーしかもこのモンスターですね他のモンスターに噛みついて他のモンスターを加えたまま攻撃してきたりとかもしますのであのとても、えー、と手ごわいモンスターですが Man, it is a tough customer I mean, what, how are you gonna get it to try to order some more food? 必ず討伐できると思いますので、ぜひ頑張ってみてください。あとですね、えー、よりですね、遊びやすくなるようにですね。That whole thing you said was give it a shot? I mean, spoiling some fun. This is all news that the. Spoiling fun. I'm not spoiling the fun. He just spent a half an hour saying, Give it a shot. Okay. いろんなこのアップデートでですね、えー、といろいろな変更もさせていただいておりますので、えー、詳しくはですね、公式サイトとかを見ていただけたらと思います。はい、えー、そしてですね、この、えー、と大型アップデートの後のですね、えー、4月の6日からですね、こちらのですね、季節イベント。Oh, seasonal event on April 6th! そちらの方がですね、アステラ祭りという季節イベントがですね、開催されまして、あの集会エリアのですねあのちょっと装飾ですね見た目がちょっと変わったりとかですね、えー、過去に、えー、配信したイベントクエストが<笑> You'll be able to play almost all the previously released event quests! <笑> oh yeah, there we go! See? Oh, look at that! Oh, oh well. <gasps> oh. もうほとんどが遊べるようになったりとかで、激運チケットが二枚もらえるようになったりとかですね。この季節イベントならではの楽しみっていうのも楽しんでいただくことができますので、ぜひこの際にまた遊んでいただけたと思います。はい、えー、それではですね、まだまだこのモンスターハンターワールド、皆さんぜひ遊んでみてください。ハッピーハンティング。Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. You guys are pretty freaking awesome. But let's go to the next video. We're almost done. Oh, I guess! Here's I guess! Oh, dang, it's I guess! Awesome! Oh, dang, it's I guess! Woo! Yeah, baby! Who else? I don't know about this game, though. Carmine. Oh no, don't don't do that to Ruby! Don't do that to Ruby! Carmine. Sure, I don't know exactly who you are, but not really. Really? Jubei? This guy's like an optional character and he's like gonna be released in. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Now let's see which which one in Blaze, which one we're getting from from.
We're not gonna get an uh, We're not gonna get an announcement for a for a Ruby character? What was that? You said something near the end. I don't know. Let's uh let's watch another this is... Dream up new ways to play using Toy-Con Garage. In part one of this video series, we'll cover the basics. Toy-Con Garage is a secret area hidden deep inside Nintendo Labo. It... it's not secret because you've already told us about it. Bad job. Also, I hate that music. I'm- I've just- I- I don't know why. I just don't like your Nintendo Labo mu music. I- I don't know. I can't- I can't take it. You can invent your own Toy-Con projects. To start, just connect one box to another. In this case, you can make the Joy-Con controller vibrate by pressing the touchscreen. <laughs> hey, 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 Beavis. <laughs> uh, you could put your- Controller in your Wii Wii and make it vibrate. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can make it like vibrate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do that again, Beavis. <laughs> Fancy some push button air guitar? Want to light up your screen with the control stick? <laughs> this is very sexual. I, I, I don't know why. What if 10 shakes of a Joy-Con sets off an explosive echo? <laughs> oh, oh, you do not want to see or hear what people are going to be doing with those commands. When you do one thing, something else will happen. No! <gasps> Causality. Cause and effect. One cannot be without the other. None does not know a reason. Not one does knows why. It's just casualty. If you've seen The Matrix, you know what I'm talking about. Input and output. Connect two boxes and discover the results. By combining these with your original designs, you can create your very own Toy-Con project. Okay, see, that is pretty cool. That is actually pretty, pretty cool. You could design your own stuff for, for this. I, I like that. I like that the possibility, I like that the possibilities are not endless. So, you know, uh, makers will find ways to figure out things to do with this thing. Trust me. I've seen so many people come up with cool things just with a $35 computer like the Raspberry Pi. This, slightly more expensive, <laughs> but it's still pretty cool, so. Cool. You can also use Toy-Con creations from the Nintendo Labo kits, like the Toy-Con fishing rod and Toy-Con motorbike. You could steer the Toy-Con RC car using the fishing rod, or use the Toy-Con motorbike as an instrument. Oh, come on. That just sounds pitiful. You won't believe the stuff you can do. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on, let's go. I get to see that back. Steer the Toy-Con RC car using the fishing rod. What is that noise it's making? Or use the Toy-Con motorbike as an instrument. You won't believe the stuff- <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, that is awesome. You can do. Flex your creativity and you may blow some minds while you're at it. Oh, this is really cool. This box is for inputs. And this one's for output. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is not like the other. But they're both called nodes. Hello? Go? Go? Input nodes range from actions like button presses to control stick movements. Middle nodes include counters and timers. And output nodes trigger effects like light up the screen or- I would just like to say that I really, really hate this music. Absolutely hate this music. Make a sound. That's what you're hearing! That's the 
distracting. Oh, get some better background music, Nintendo. There are many different types of nodes, and each one can be customized. For example, you can specify which button will trigger a button note. I, I can't hear anything because that stupid music is so distracting. You can even specify the direction and range of a control stick node. Okay, see, that's pretty cool. That's that's just getting deep into the <laughs> deep. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This is this is. Hmm. Seems like this can get pretty deep. Ooh. Oh my. Master the mechanics of Toy Kong Garage and you can create some amazing projects. Whoa! Okay, see, that was pretty cool. Yes. Oh, come on. That's stupid. You already have one to switch. In part two, we will roll out the Toy Con RC tank. See you next time. Oh, okay, see that, 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 uh, I mean, Lobo's getting cooler by the minute. So, so you know what? That's, that's actually pretty cool. I, I think that that's, that's pretty cool. So anyway, we're over two hours of streaming. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to end, uh, the stream, uh, the announcements basically by showing you a list of who rock paper shotgun thinks it's the best final fantasy games of all time and of course rock paper shotgun they're excellent game journalists <laughs> okay so let's see they picked nine final fantasy games to put in their list and they put number nine as final fantasy 10 2 I, um, I've never played this game, so I can't say for sure if it's good or not, but we know that Yuna is a pop singer now. Okay, so next game is Final Fantasy VI. Wow. Uh, that's kind of low, considering that some people consider that to be the best Final Fantasy game, but... Okay. Final Fantasy 4 is ranked higher than Final Fantasy uh Wow. They say that Final Fantasy 12 is better, so I I actually um don't know if that's true or not, but none of these games have Captain Borsch in it. So I would say that this game deserves its high ranking. It deserves to be higher though. Final Fantasy 15 is higher. Then Final Fantasy 12, that's interesting. Final Fantasy 9, I can believe that. Final Fantasy 9 is actually a pretty a pretty good Final Fantasy game from what I've been told. Final Fantasy 7 is number 3, which I mean I don't I don't play I don't no let's not pretend. This game is popular. Final Fantasy 10. Apparently they think it's better. But what is the best one? And they say it's Final Fantasy VIII. Yep, there you go. Often considered to be one of the worst Final Fantasy games, but they say it's the best one. I actually like Final Fantasy VIII, so I, I do agree that uh, this game is better than what most people are, are calling it out to be. But anyway, that's the end of the stream here. That's the end of the show. However, I'm going to add uh, a couple of more things here. Uh, I'm going to add... Uh, I'm going to share a zombies video. So we're going to watch the video. We're going to do two more things. We're going to do a zombies video. Oh, no, we're, gonna, we're not done yet. But we're, we're going to watch a zombies video. Uh and uh i see what he mean what she means by that so let's 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 talk about uh let's see the richest for the last 30 years japanese animation or anime has grown in popularity as is evident in the cosplay community can i ask you why you have the subtitles there 
cutting the screen. If you're not familiar with anime, or even if you are, it can get quite surreal at times. Quite surreal. Quite surreal. Okay. I'd say it's fucked up beyond measure. Bizarre monsters, ultra violent and dark storylines, unconventional ways of addressing sexuality. Mm. These are but a few things that can suddenly make an appearance and turn an anime storyline on its head. <gasps> Sunday night tune! Sunday night tune! Sometimes it's entertaining, but as you'll see, it can get downright creepy. Shiki. Oh, I've never seen if you Cheeky. Like anime and vampires, then Cheeky might be for you. Just think of it as Twilight, only with less Kristen Stewart and more pale-faced, glowing red-eyed vampires hunting you in the dark. Hmm. You've just described something like t as comparison to Twilight. Hmm. I'm not sure I want to. Given that there is more than one creepy scene in this show, you can take your pick. Our personal favorite are the creepy red-eyed vampire girl sliding out from under the bed while you sleep, or the scene where the villagers kill and tie up vampires while three blind mice plays in the background. You said that you were going to be showing creepy scenes, top 10 creepy scenes. You've said many scenes. Is there one you're going to pick from? Uh, yes. Helsing. Oh, you didn't pick a scene. So you're just picking anime with anime scenes. Oh, and yes, Helsing. Totally, totally freaking awesome. Yep, more vampire anime. This particular Man. series follows a special organization tasked with stopping the rise of evil supernatural beings and especially Nazi vampires. Ah. It sounds comical. There are some absurdly dark scenes throughout. Yeah. Really creepy. The scene involving Alucard in the basement of Helsing's headquarters in episode two has to take top billing. After all, if transforming into a near shapeless hellhound who rips apart opponents with ease doesn't paint an alarming image, what does, really? Uh, that's why Alucard is a, is a freaking badass, man. So I love Alucard. Mermaid Forest. I've never seen Mermaid Forest. Uh, it looks old, though. The premise of this story is that mermaid flesh can make humans immortal, and human flesh can make mermaids look young. In the opening episode, we find the character Mana held by a group of shriveled old mermaids who are raising the girl for food. The dark atmosphere and E.T.-looking villagers are pretty creepy, but the introduction of the Lost Souls, people horribly mutated by- Oh, dear God. Flesh, well, that just gets bizarre. Higarashi no Nakukoro ni. Okay, that I've heard. Higarashi, I have heard that Higarashi is actually pretty disturbing. Big eyed, cute anime girls stabbing each other and beating the hell out of everything in sight. Yep, that is just a taste of Higurashi. This series is dark. Jesus. But one clearly stands out above the rest. We achieve 10 out of 10 on the uncomfortable scale when Shion is secured to a device which pulls her fingernails right out. Oh! It's a dark and disturbing moment made worse by the sound effects, which are sure to make any viewer clench their hands up tight. Oh, Higurashi. Oh. Oh, Little girl with red eyes who looks 13 but died hundreds of years ago? Yeah, that's getting spooky. Oh. I, Emma, as she is known, appears whenever someone's name gets entered on a secret website. She then ensures that person is escorted to hell. Oh, so that's like the ring, basically. Or the grudge. However, it's not that straightforward. As in the case of Sage Mushroom, the what's up, man? <laughs> the person with an array of twisted and nightmare like visions before personally rowing the What is going on? Final destination. Oh. So you go you put in their name and then they go to hell. Oh, okay. I've never seen Hell Girl, but that looks like a very interesting concept, man. Very nice. Oh man, well Sage, thank you. Thank you so much. Quartz party, tortured souls. Oh, I've never seen Quartz Party when either, so like that, how couldn't this have some creepy moments? <laughs> this series follows a group of friends who unwittingly get teleported into another world where they find themselves in oh, a dear. school filled with evil ghosts. Oh. There definitely isn't just one creepy moment as you have your pick of what? scissor wielding demons or torturous monsters who slowly cut off various body parts. Oh. Really, the violence, gore, and atmosphere just make this one uncomfortable from start to finish. But the most interesting thing about Higurash is not the girl part. It's a great mystery anime series. Is this a K-pop stream? <laughs> no, it isn't a K-pop stream, EGM. It's just a video that uh, that uh, a friend of mine showed me. This is basically a, 
a video that told me about 10 creepy scenes in anime. We're actually done with the game stream part, but uh, she wanted to show me... Uh, Oh, I'm just checking out this list because uh, she told me that this was like a, a list full of, of anime. I haven't heard of, of these animes because I'm a fan of anime. Uh, this is definitely not a K-pop string, so you won't hear uh, BTAs or EXO. So sorry, man. Might get copyright infringements for doing that. Another. This 12 episode series has a creepy vibe right now. Another. This is probably down to the fact that another is about a school which is seeing students dying mysteriously because of a curse. What? An enemy in a school? What? No. Stop it. The creepy award for this Kim. goes to a scene where Shoji Kubodera, the ninth grade homeroom teacher, finally succumbs to the curse and plunges a giant knife into his throat while his class watches. Oh, wow. Done there, Kubodera's blood sprays all over his students before he falls dead on the floor. Oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Why ya? Nise Monogatari. This particular anime is best known for one infamous scene involving a toothbrush. Specifically, it involves what? his brother brushing the teeth of his sister in what can only be described as the most disturbing sexualization of oral hygiene ever done in animation history. Why? 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 Why on earth are you doing that? Why are you doing that? The sounds, the character's positions, and the camera shots all what? feel like a sex scene, but without the sex. Take the toothbrush out of the equation, and this is just a creepy Why? This, moment. But this is, this is, this could get me in trouble. Elf and lead. Oh, El oh, okay. Here we go. Here we freaking go. Lucy is a Elf and lead. A being with horns and powerful invisible arms who has a bit of a murderous tendency around other people. A bit of a murderous tendency. Yeah. Full of gore and blood. However, one scene that stands out is when some schoolboys taunt Lucy and kill a puppy right in front of her. What? Uh huh. Well, that in itself makes the scene horrifying. Lucy tops it all off by losing her marbles and slaughtering everyone in the room in a tidal wave of blood and dismembered limbs. Ah. Uh, hey, you said that this thing. <laughs> Yes, anime can have a very strange side. Narutaru. Naruto hits that mark with the death of Aki Honda, a bully and a villain in the series. Oh, Honda well, thank you for the spoilers. Really nasty and made one of her victims eat worms before sexually assaulting with a test. Oh, dear Jesus. Set up for a creepy and disturbing scene where a monster appears and pins her to a wall. Not done there, the monster assaults Honda with a shape-shifting test tube before impaling and killing her. What? That definitely leaves you wondering what the hell you just watched. Oh, oh, now you're wondering what the hell you just watched. Okay. Well, Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I don't care about everything else here, so... Nice video. Nice list. I like that. I like that. So, uh... Not bad. I do like uh, those in, those animes uh, lists are there, but uh, I'm gonna add that add that over there to the next to the stream. So you guys who uh, who who just came on right now to watch, I'm going to leave the links to all of the articles that we talked about and everything that we talked about today. This is what I'm gonna be putting them all together. Plus, also uh, I'm going to be uh, including the stream the 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 streams uh, Discord servers because I always add an article from a Google Docs with all of the links there if you want to join the Discord server as well too you can join as well and uh I hope that you guys uh like the little bit that you saw here so <laughs> so yeah that was a pretty freaking uh, interesting list but uh now I'm going to be ending the stream I'm going to just play around to see if I can if I can get the sound effects going so if you guys want to ask or say or, or offer anything before I, I leave, because I do have to, uh, the stream just kind of went over. So I, I heard of go sick. I've heard go sick is, uh, I've heard of go sick. I heard it, that it's, a uh, it's a pretty good one. I have not seen go sick, but, uh, I mean, there's so much anime that I want to see and I can see, but I'm just not because I'm just streaming all the time. <laughs> I'm streaming all the time. I heard Go Sick is pretty mysterious. I heard that. Um, 
what was this other one um erased i heard that erased was pretty good as well too as a mystery as a mystery one i heard erased was pretty good um there's a couple of them that are that i that are at the top of my head i just can't remember but anyway i'm gonna look into uh both the youtube video downloader and the online convert.com so that i could check out and see what i can do here so uh so that's what i'm gonna try to do see if i could if i could implement those as for later today uh i'm going to be uh i'm going to be streaming uh See, I would love to, I mean, when I stream, I stream in the morning, and then, oh, zombie, I've heard of that one, too. <laughs> I've heard that that is, uh, yeah, 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 I've heard of, I've heard of that, too, that one. I don't think I want to watch that one. <laughs> uh yeah erased i heard i also heard uh, i also heard uh stuff um there's some other ones that i want to watch here as well too i have them on the on the funimation I, i'm subscribed to funimation so there's so many of them that i want to watch here uh yes Ooh. okay so you you got me with the butterfly effect man you you didn't need to convince me any 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 longer. So let's take a look here. Uh, there's a couple of ones that I have on my queue that I want to watch. I want I want to watch Real Life. I heard that Mop Psycho 100 is getting a second season, which I'm really happy about. That uh, I want to watch the Melancholy of Hiroi Susumiya, Record of Lotus War, Gamers, The Future Diary. Uh, Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody. Um, I've heard that the Ancient Magus' Bride is actually pretty good as well. Uh, I've watched Soul Eater. I thought that was pretty cool. Slayers. I heard it was just like old, but I heard Slayers was actually pretty awesome. Uh, A Certain Scientific Railgun is, is one that I like to watch. Fully Cooly as well. I like... Uh, um, and then you've got anime eye candy, uh, death parade. I heard death parade was actually pretty good as well, too. Actually, you said that you posted some things on your, on the discord. Hold on. I got a bunch of things on, on the discords. New mentions. Oh. Well, spawner clip. Thank you, spawner. <laughs> you said that you... Oh, oh, okay. So I'm just catching up on the stuff. I like the bed frame. I like the bed frame. I like that. Uh... No, no, I'm not insulting you. I'm describing you. <laughs> nice. Uh a certain yeah i've heard in i've heard that it's like multiple ones like index and railgun uh i want to watch a uh, ergo proxy as well too uh i've heard grimgar is pretty good uh helsing obviously uh i also started watching my hero academia and i sort of stopped um index is the prequel in the same world as railgun okay so i'll check index then railgun uh, panty, panty and stocking with garter belt. I heard that one was pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, Rage of Bahamut Genesis. I don't know if that one's good or not, but I heard about, about that one as well. Space Dandy. He's not just Dandy. He's Space, Space Dandy. And of course, there are a couple of other things. I heard, uh, in Funimation that they added... They added uh, a whole bunch of different things. Like they, it looks like they added uh, OVAs as well too. So they added uh, the girl who leapt through time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. I, I'm. 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 I'm actually so far behind from Super. It's not even funny. People keep posting stuff online, and I'm like, and they're watching Super, and I'm like, I, I, I need to, I need to watch Super. 
So DBC Super is is I'm totally behind from Super. Uh, trying to find out what else I want to watch here. I'll do it in the most popular, like uh, the Boy and the Beast, Wolf Children, pretty much anything from uh, Momoru Husoda. I'm gonna watch. Curl, of course, uh, the girl who leapt through time. I'm gonna watch that as well too. I heard Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid was actually pretty funny as well too. I don't do too much slice of life, but uh, I'll I'm willing to get that, give that one a chance. Summer Wars, I like to give Summer Wars a shot as well. Uh, finish, finish. Maybe <laughs> Spice and Wolf. There's so much anime I haven't watched and, and I don't put any time to watch. And that's the problem when you stream always on your free time. It's always like, how do you find time to watch it? In reality, I can watch. It's just that I put all that time on YouTube. So what I got to do is I got to stop watching YouTube and start watching anime. And my wrestling because I'm, I haven't been watching wrestling. <laughs> so... Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to end the stream here today, but uh, actually was thinking of maybe doing something else, but I, I can't minimize the application. Okay, here we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to end the stream today. Uh, street, uh, the live cast is going to end it today, but I'm going to watch. I'm going to see if I could... Uh, I've already watched Trigun. Trigun is amazing. And like and I love Cowboy Bebop even better. Cowboy Bebop is to me is better, but freaking love Trigun. Vash the Stampede! Oh my god, it's Vash! Vash the the humanoid typhoon! The devil's helper! <laughs> so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be back later. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming some some uh, some other stuff here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start streaming Final Fantasy 15 or finish Prey, whichever. But uh, but thank you for joining me, Zombie. Uh, I'll check out the uh, I'll check out those links that you gave me. I probably won't go to the cam girl, <laughs> the cam girl site. But uh, but anyway, uh, I will definitely check out uh the uh the otaku stream uh the one where you uh you know for high school of the dead if high school of the dead is on Funimation, actually you know what let me check let me check i'm actually curious uh hi okay okay high school of the dead is not uh on Funimation, but I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, anime, the, the, there's a ton of anime. That's the thing about anime. Anime just comes out in droves. And so much. And you probably, while you were watching your favorites, you missed out on a whole bunch of them. So, <laughs> so. Anyway, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop my stream. And uh, the next time that I stream, it's probably going to be, I'd say, I say I've been in the next three to four hours, maybe, uh, or maybe at the minimum in the next two to three hours, because there are things that I need to do. Uh, there are some adult adulting things that I have to do. I got to do my taxes and I, and I need a little time to do that. So I'm going to do that. And uh, well, so... Uh, 80% of all the anime. Wow. Well, I'm impressed, zombie. There is so much anime out there, man. It's crazy. But uh, that's the good thing about anime. There's anime for everyone. There's anime for people that just want action. There's anime for people that just want sadness, happy, drama, slice of life. There's so much different kinds of anime. It's super fun. There, there, and of course, I go to anime conventions. Uh, I go to an uh, uh, anime festival in Orlando, and I'm going again this year. Uh, always fun. 
always a blast and uh i definitely will be will be going again this year so anyway guys uh yeah, you guys got me beat by a lot. <laughs> I have not watched. The, the The funny thing is that I used to watch more anime when it was di more difficult. Uh, when it was more difficult to to watch back then. Uh, and now that anime services are everywhere, now I'm like I'm never watching them, and that's a shame. So, so anyway, guys, I got to do some adulting and as well as, uh, I'm going to also figure out how to, uh, how to do the, uh, the SFX here. So maybe, uh, at the end of the game stream, I'll do like a special stream just so y'all could see me figure this whole thing out. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will be back later today, but you guys have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Zombie, uh, thank you for the anime recommendations. And also, uh, good luck with the bed frame. Uh, have fun. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. See you later. Bye.